Hello and welcome everyone. This is going to be a quick announcement before we get started with the video. We have a current promotion going on. If you join our Discord link, you'll get free access for a complete week. Uh, no gimmicks, no signups necessary. It's completely free. You also get a 12-hour tape reading course sent to you via DM. So don't miss out. Link is going to be in the description. This is a limited time deal only. So don't miss out if you've been looking at uh, joining the tape reading chat room or learning more about tape reading. It's a great opportunity without any costs. This conference will now be recorded. Welcome to Level 1, Lesson 3. And as always, everything that we're going to be talking about today is for educational purposes only, and nothing is intended as any type of investment advice. All right, so let's go just recap for a little bit of what we went over yesterday. So really kind of being able to take our volume patterns and what we see in volume and really attribute it to exactly how the stock itself is trading. All right, that's obviously, you know, we talked about yesterday. That's the first part of it. We, you know, we can't just trade based off of that alone. Obviously, our prints are always going to be still be the number one factor. But really understanding the personality of these stocks. So when we get into the actual print side of things, we're able to identify all possibilities and exactly what they need or would look like as they're, you know, about to happen. So yesterday we talked about volume. Okay, our volume pattern pretty much, we're, you know, the stock with, with basically being a tradable stock, we're either going to see consistent volume because we're always under the assumption that the stock is going to have volume. If it didn't have volume, we wouldn't be looking at it in the first place. So we're really going to see more of a consistent type of volume or more of a sporadic type of volume. Okay, based off of that and how the stock's actually trading with that type, it really gives us an indication of exactly what the stock's gonna do. I do wanna bring up just IBO real quick, just, you know, perfect example yesterday, you know, as we were talking about it, coming into that two level, we can see, okay, our volume just became too sporadic. All right, when we see volume like this, what that means is that follow through is gonna be very hard. All right. So a lot, you know, a lot of the time when we do see that big volume bar coming in, instead of it actually being a trigger, it's really just an easy way to get shaken out on something that's unsustainable. Knowing that within its personality helps us kind of get away from trying to force things that aren't really there. Because you can see overall, even if it's getting great buying and it's moving this 50 cents, this 50 cents is very hard to enter on because you have to be, again, damn near perfect because of the fact that this type of volume does not give a lot of triggers, okay? And reason being, again, is when that we do get that volume, it typically is going to be unsustainable. It won't last. So once you do get that move, you're up there maybe for a little bit, and then we end up getting these big bars right back down to where we started from. So it, it you know, this type of volume is not great for trading unless what? Unless what? Because if it still looks like this type of volume, doesn't necessarily mean it's not great. Yeah, the volume overall needs to be higher. We can't have sporadic volume and get going into volume, uh, volume valleys. Okay, because if that's the case, this is exactly what our expectations are going to be for the most part. Obviously, there's different situations, different things can change. Okay, we'll get to that when we get to the print side of things. Okay, but if the volume was higher, Okay, even with these bars, that's fine, but as it was coming more into dips and we were still sitting around the 300,000, that would change everything within our expectations. Okay, that makes for better trades because it's not just stopping trading afterwards, which gives it the opportunity to not always be, you know, these bars not be unsustainable almost every single time that we see them. All right. Then we talked about trading styles. So we, you know, we talked about build yesterday and all the different ways, the psychology behind building, what they're doing, so on and so forth. So what's today? What do we need to talk about? Because we had two parts of our trading style. We have build and we have what? Release or money time, which is our favorite part of trading. So what we have to do is we have to be able to identify what money time actually looks like and where its possibilities are going to be. Now, we're going to bring volume into account again, because volume is a real good way of understanding when money time is possible. Now, we're starting to get to, you know, after 10 o'clock. We know this morning is definitely one of the slower mornings that we have seen. There just not been a ton that's going on out there. So we know the overall personality of the day isn't exactly great. 
All right. So coming into the later times, into that 1030 area, we're not going to be able to expect really that much just based off of what we have. All right. But what's one of the easiest ways that we could see a stock is the ability to start to come into money time? Something we should be using almost with every single stock. It's one of the best ways we can see something's going for money time. Our volume patterns. There you go. Volume patterns. Okay, understanding our volume patterns really helps us understand when there's a possibility of it changing from that building time going into money time. All right, because technically we're, we're switching. We go back and forth. There's, you know, for the most part, obviously, you know, there's certain exceptions every once in a while. But for the most part, we're not going to see a stock go straight up and straight down. OK, it's just not really likely. So we're going to be going through phases throughout the day of building and money time. So typically money time is going to come after building. Building comes after money time or our calculations. end. we have to go back into that building type phase. So our volume patterns really show us that if we're in building and we start to see we know the stock, statistically speaking, isn't going to stop trading. Our volume pattern is really going to give us an indication that it's almost time and what does that look like similar to what we talked about with sporadic volume okay with sporadic volume we're looking for that you know that big that first big bar afterwards it's to go into that you know the consolidated lower type trading all right and from there we can start to see when that is starting to kind of get higher and that first volume bar comes out well we know that we're going to get volume OK, and typically if we're going to get volume, OK, we want to then look at what? Because the volume pattern's not enough. That's just giving us an indication of what's coming OK, in a generalized time frame. What do we have to look at next to really give us time? Or prints. One of the easiest ways to see a stock is coming to a money time situation is looking at our prints. All right. And when we go over, you know, to, uh, later this afternoon, when we start going over prints and every possibility that could come from a grouping of prints. OK. What's one of the easiest ways to know that a stock's volume is going when it, the volume comes in that they're looking to get into that money time or into that release? What's one of the easiest ways to see this? We look for them all the time. One of the easiest ways. Tape speeds up, yeah. See, see, that's the thing. So looking for off-level prints, shorter term prints. Okay, that's one of the first things. So when we're looking for the personality or the trading personality to change into money time or into now time. All right. Our prints need to match it. All right. We need to see somebody that's coming in that shows some type of of sense of urgency that they need to be in now. Because if they're showing that at us that they need to be in now, well, they're not looking to make, you know, to miss the move that's actually coming. OK, so when we see somebody come in with a now type position and our volume pattern starts to match up with it, well, that's giving us edited variables to understand that, well, this next trigger that's coming up should be our spot. Because if somebody's going to get in right this second, OK, and they show that sense of urgency, do they really need to steal some type of 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 shares? If they're coming in on short term now prints, or are they just trying to get in because they know what's about to happen? And we're going to get alignment in a second. Yeah, they're going to know. So when we see something like that, that gives us a great indication that we have however many prints it is, we have that many increments within our calculation that the stock should be going into money time for. So what does that mean? Well, if we start to see what looks like a little bit of building before it hits its, its uh, calculation, do we have to worry about that? 
or because they told us it was money time, do we have more leniency? These are things that we need to think about as we're as we're watching and we're coming in with our prints. No, because we know that that person showed us the short term that they're basically what they're telling us is there's an a extended period of time. And what that is based off what our calculations is that this stock is going to continue up without having to make a strong build. Now, can that change if someone decides to come in halfway through and show us huge building now? Is that time frame going to change? So it's interesting, not always, because a lot of times when you have that short term, that person that came in for money time, okay, you gotta have, we're under the assumption that market makers know everything that's going to happen. A lot of times you're gonna see that short term person make their money first before the actual building comes in. Because if they're showing you that much building, do they really care about time frame that they need to build within that stock. And it's not even not even that they don't care, but does it matter? Not really. So we're typically going to see the stock actually hit that shorter term first before it comes in. That's what makes for such a great trade the other way. When calculations run out and the alignment from the original, well, it's not really, it's technically it's not alignment at all. One's saying short term, one's saying long term. Okay, but when that cal that short term calculation runs out, well, now there's nothing left to do but come back and build. These are great spots to anticipate. So when we have short term and building within the same time frame, if we're looking to take a building trade, our best trades are typically going to come when the all the short term runs out. Because if no one else has to make money towards the upside, is there any reason not to bring it down to now build? And what's the great thing about money time? Who do we know is getting in when a stock is going straight up? Retail. So do we know or do market makers know that once they've made their, whoever needed to make their money to the upside, do they know they're going to have a retail, a nice big retail pool to be able to take from as they drop it down? Of course, it's perfect because they don't need to play a lot of games. That's why that makes when when we're looking for a building type trade and the trading style is in money time. But let's say we miss that money time, so we can't take it long because we're not going to just chase the stock. When that short term runs out and they shown building, that's typically where the building is going to start. It gives us a great way to be able to anticipate the actual move. But you'll notice. A lot of these trades, do they just come straight down to build or do they sit up there for a while? Well, we're going to notice that they come straight down to build. And that's the reason it is because we are, they know and we know that retail has already been getting into it because retail loves buying during money time. Their problem is, is that they don't anticipate by the time that they get in, well, the person's made their money and now they're looking to bring it back down and they bring it back straight down because there's no reason to have to play a ton of games within their, you know, bringing it back down to build because they've already have the retail in there. They don't need to bring it back up to get more after a stock has been in a true money time. What's another great way to know a stock is changing to money time? Think of like money time, like a trend. Like, you know, it's, we, we get in money time is a stock we buy and then the stock goes straight up. And obviously there's always going to be a little bit of movement, but to be expected. What's another great way to see that the trading style is turning to money time? We used this word a little bit yesterday and we're gonna be talking a whole lot about this because there's certain patterns that we're gonna see within prints that 
Well, trend reversal, which we were kind of just talking about a little bit before, but I don't even care where where the stock's actually going. So personality, okay, but we're, we're really talking about within a trading personality right now, money time, understanding that the personality is money time. Okay, as we know we're looking at the prints, what's another great way using the prints that we could see a stock is coming close to money time? Well, it's alignment. Okay, the thing is, is that when market makers start to align, okay, that means that if someone's looking to go long for the short term, okay, that someone is, is building on bids, you know, whatever the situation of prints that are aligning, when we start to have multiple market makers lining up and aligning with each other, okay, what does that start to tell us about time frame? What does that start to tell us about our time frame? I'll give you a second to think about that. Yeah, it's definitely looking to break sooner than later. Okay, again, we can go to our volume pattern and see if we have a volume pattern coming and alignment, the chances of our next trigger being a uh, high probability trigger skyrockets. And the reason being is that when multiple market makers start to align, they all now see exactly what they're doing. Okay, and if you have a bunch of market makers that are all making the move, a move at the same time, they're, they're literally, they're showing a sense of urgency. Otherwise, they wouldn't be making the move yet. They'd be waiting until, you know, until they actually had to, if they were, if they were doing, them, doing it themselves. When we start to see market maker alignment, it's telling us that our, statistically our chances of our next trigger that comes is going to work out. Obviously, if you're taking a you know, trigger with volume and price action. Okay, a trigger doesn't just mean the stock, you know, we, we see a bar within the stock. It's got to be a true trigger. But it's giving us the time. It's giving us the uh, the showing us the personality of that stock is changing. So the more market makers that come in and start to align, we can see that it's really it's getting ready for that go time. It's getting ready for money time to act. You know to start to happen. Okay, and when we look for these situations and we start to see them, you'll notice that. There's not too many different ways that market makers align. So once you see it a couple times, you're just going to start to see it everywhere. Obviously, there needs to be actual trading going on. And, you know, it can't be a dead morning with really no volume. Okay, but alignment shows us that our personality of our trading style is switching over to money time. <laughs> Do market makers align in a consolidation? They can. And if there, we see it happen in a consolidation, what does that tell us? Ah, there you go, Steve. When it's ready, getting closer to money time. If you ever notice a real long consolidation, the beginning of it, you're not going to see a lot of market makers coming into it. Okay? It really kind of just, it really is very just completely mixed in the beginning parts of it. And then as we start getting towards the end of it, you're going to start to see actual market makers a lot. And again, that's telling us that our time frame within that consolidation is coming to an end. Okay, so we're going from build to money time. Multiple market maker alignment is they'll all come in off level towards the same direction. Doesn't necessarily even need to be the same direction. Doesn't even need necessarily need to be the same time frame. You know, for instance, you have a short term person come in and sh uh, and short, let's say off level short prints. But then you have a bigger market maker that shows huge building on the ask. Where's the stock going? Up or down? Someone comes in short-term bids. 
Another market maker comes in, huge ask prints. At a con like, huge ask controlling prints. Where's the stock going? It's going down first. Why? Why are we so confident in that? The ecosystem. <laughs> I mean, that's really kind of a good way to put it. But yeah, short term's telling us they want to make money to the downside. They want to take a short. The building is telling us that they wanted to go down to build. <laughs> Those two market makers' ideas align. <laughs> is there any contradiction within them? Nope. They're exactly, they're literally helping each other. That's what market maker alignment is. <laughs> Only if you can see the time frames correctly. Well, all right. And I know we kind of went through time of day a little quick yesterday. So I do want to spend a little bit of time on it. So we talked. Our best time to trade is obviously it should be from 930 to 1030. Okay. It used to be pushed. It's a little bit more towards 11, even 1130 some days. But as we can see, <laughs> the mornings. <laughs> They go by pretty quick. We have about an hour now in the morning where we can really basically see a stock moving and understand that it's not going to stop trading yet. You know, once we hit past 1030, well, you know, things are things start to get a little bit sketchier a little bit earlier now. So 1030 to 11, still pretty decent time. It's just we're going to start to see a lot of things. So we're going to start to see a lot of prints during that 1030 to 11 point that aren't going to act out now. And what I mean by that is that there's going to be a lot of floating attached to those prints. <laughs> so we're not gonna see that that true, for the most part, obviously if volume's high and a stock is pumping, did, did these generalizations matter? No, right? Because obviously, if you know, if, the, if it's just trading, it's trading. Okay, but we, we have to understand that when we see those prints, okay, come in around that 10, 30, 11 point, once we start to get to that 11, a lot of float is going to happen. So we're not going to see that direct kind of money time type trade. <laughs> we're going to see stocks literally float to where they're looking to go. It's a lot of testing that goes on. And there's a lot of market makers that just aren't trading at that moment. That's why we start to see volume drop down so much. Now, 11 to 12, okay, is for the most part pretty dead, okay? Once we get to that 11 o'clock point, you'll have a few things here, a few things there, but 11 to 12 is a little bit dead. Now, 12 is an interesting time, basically 12 to 12.30, okay, as of late. What do we notice? About tw it starts at about 12 to 12.30. Like today, it will probably be, be 12.30 because we have traders exchange. So what do we start to see around there? Some trades finishing up their move, and that's exactly what it is. Okay, what we see at a lot of the time is something that should have happened in a shorter time frame. For some reason, right as we start to get into that 12, 1230 area, we see a lot of them come to fruition, especially with what type of stock. Especially with what? Not market stocks. The exact opposite. Well, new story, but more cheap stocks. If you'll notice, the cheap stocks that should have done something that they just did, that didn't happen in the time frame that we were expecting it to, a lot of times at 12 to 12.30 point, that's when we have to you know, be ready for it. Okay, it's funny because, you know, everyone's going to lunch and then all of a sudden we get those, you know, those those great moves that end up coming back in. And that typically, again, once, you know, between 12 and 1230. Now, 1230 to 2 is just hit or miss. I mean, you really got to focus on your volume. Most things are going to be floating at this this point. Okay, then coming into three o'clock, what do we see? 
So coming into three o'clock is very, not the same, but a bit similar to what we see at that 12 to 12.30 point. So when we have that last 15 minutes before three o'clock comes, we start to see some entries come from that same type of deal. Things that came in, but didn't, that should have happened at a certain time frame, but didn't happen. <clears throat> it's almost right before shake time. You kind of get that, that move. Okay. And it's, when I say entry, it's because a lot of times you don't get that just great consistent type trading. It's more again of that float type trading. So when a stock is, has float type trading and great prints, how important is it to have an antis and anticipate the first trigger, especially going into the afternoon? How important is that first trigger? And that's the word for it. It's imperative. Okay. With If we wait during these later times where – Basically, you get your entry, but then it goes into more of a float type trade rather than a trading trade. Does everyone understand what I mean by that? A float type trade rather than a trading trade? Does anyone have any questions on what I mean by that? Volume out of nowhere, well, kind of. It's more along the lines of once once you get that move, it's not it's not one of those trades that's going to get as far away as quickly as possible. It's going to get to where it needs to be, but there's going to be a lot of kind of just up and down and sideways. It's not it's not going to really just book and get exact. You know, you're not going to get that that big. You know, double bars that start to move like that. It's really just kind of kind of float to where it needs to be. And what's the problem with a trade when it's floating and not being moved by trades? I mean, obviously it's still being moved by trades, but they're fewer and far between. Well, so risk-based entry. It's not the problem. Isn't with the entry. It's that when a stock is just moving really slow and controlled, and there's not a lot of trading in it that's really directing it to that spot, what does it leave us open to? <laughs> Leaves us open to something very dangerous. Yeah, bars. <laughs> you know, like for instance, IQ right now, very controlled. But see how it's really just floating right now? It's not really being traded that quick. Well, it's still being traded. Obviously, it needs to be traded to move. But it's really just kind of here's some trades, here's some trades, here's some trades. It's still going underneath you know, the, the level. Okay, we had beautiful bid prints at that seven earlier this morning. It's still going. It's just, eh. Now, how easy would it be for me to come in right now cover a huge position and bar this thing up when it's trading like this. You think that would be a hard thing or an easy thing? Yeah, it would be pretty easy. So that's why when we're talking about in these float type trades, that first trigger, when we get to that time frame, you know, and that later in the day, our first trigger and anticipating where that trigger is going to be is so important. Because if we miss that first entry and we don't have a good, you know, a per perfect entry, we're just open to too many things. Okay, and then what happens? We want to keep ourselves out of positions we don't want to put ourselves in. So if we take that trigger, you know, all is well and good. But once we miss that trigger because we didn't anticipate it and we still think the stock needs to move, what are we putting ourselves in the position to try and do? And you could all swear up and down that you don't do this, but we all know that, that we do. What does that leave us open to trying to do? Well, try to find another trigger. Okay, and when a stock is floating, how many triggers can we really expect to get? What happens to the percent of our trigger personality? Does it become high or low? Is 
Yeah, it, it decreases by a huge amount. <laughs> okay, so we don't want to leave ourselves open to that. So remember, during those time frames, basically any time after, you know, after noon, okay, we have to make sure we're anticipating. We have orders ready. We can't see something start to happen, then put in our order, then try to catch it late because the chances of, you know, of our, us not getting caught up in some type of floating games, it, it's just too high of a chance of it happening. So it doesn't make sense. We have to, it, it's just imperative to us that we go out there, okay, and we understand that even though it's, a, it's almost like a slow money time. And of course, there's exceptions to every rule. You know, every once in a while, we have an afternoon, we have a, a trade that is trained like it's at 930. Okay, but we have to, you know, we, we, we have to come in day in and day out and duplicate this. And that's not something that we can duplicate because it doesn't happen very often. More than more, more times than not, it's going to happen exactly like we were just talking about. So understanding time frames and where it fits into our volume and what the trading style is, they go hand in hand. Any questions? <laughs> All right. So what I want to do is I want to go in the market now and take everything that we had. <laughs> And I want to identify some personalities. All right. So let's start with IQ. <clears throat> so what about IQ? Remember, we have our volume, our trading style, and our time of day. Time of day, you know, it's 1030. It's not terrible. It's not great. But what do we see here? What what is this? What is the personality of IQ today? Um, not tradable. Well, why not? I mean, would I be looking for an entry right now? Not really, but. Consistently low. Okay. I mean, volume's still trading at 101,000 shares a minute. Is that terrible? It's not really that bad. Is it going to be a huge mover? No. Okay, what do I notice about pullbacks? Because our trading style tells us what we can expect. So if it's, you know, if it trades a builder, you know, it shows us a building, then obviously we can expect building. But what do we notice about our pullbacks? We have, we've broken everything down, but there's certain, a list of things that should go off in our head. Yeah, pullback's about 20 cents. So I'm obviously not looking to take anything to the upside, right? Unless what would need to happen? What would need to happen in order for me to be looking to take something to the upside? Yep, change in personality, but change in personality where? Where do I want to see it first? Yep, right in those prints. Okay, so we'd be really be looking to either short it, okay, or we'd be looking for a complete change of personality within the prints. That's what would have to happen in order for us to even expect it. Because what if we just see a change in volume coming in and the stock starts to move up, but the prints don't change? Can I expect that as, oh, you know what, now it, it's going to go up. We're going to make a you know giant move back to the upside? Or do the prints have to show up first? What comes first, movement or prints? Yeah, so it's going to need the prints. I would need to see something at 7. That's just gigantic, changes everything. Okay, it could be at 690, something that's completely out of the ordinary for how the stock trades. Otherwise, looking at its personality, 
Okay, even with volume, you know, at its highest, you really get no pullbacks. Okay, if you were to look to try to take a pullback trade on this, what would your your, your trigger personality be? These are all questions that we have to ask ourselves. How many times could you have clicked the button to the upside and actually been correct? I would even give you two. I'll give you this one and I'll give you this one. Okay, but how many bars have came out of this stock today? So let's <laughs> think about the statistics there. I'd have to be damn near what? Perfect. To even have a chance of trading this to the upside. So guess what? Not going to do it. If I look at how many times I could have been correct shorting it, it's a lot more. But when we look at our personality of the stock, do we think that? You know, just because it's got small pullbacks doesn't mean that the stock can't go up, but it means I'm not going to trade it up unless what needs to happen. I know what the possibilities need to what it needs to be. And it's a gigantic change within those prints. All right, let's look at let's use NVDA. All right, what do we notice? What questions do we need to ask and get answered? Definitely consistent volume. <coughs> no question. What else? What else do we notice? Oh, is it in building or money time? It's got kind of a mix of both, doesn't it? Looks like it's been doing some building on its way down, no? With how consistently overlapped these bars are. <laughs> so it still has that trend to the downside, but look at how it's been trading, even with that trend. Volume's consistent. Okay, is this a hard stock to build with? No, it's not really, not at all. So if it's not a hard stock to build with, we got to think, what's, what are my chances? Looking at trading a stock with this personality. High, low. It's definitely low to the upside. So as we talked about before, I would need to see a change in some type of prints that came in if I was looking to trade it to the upside. But if they're able to build on the way down and they have been building on the way down, okay, what do I need? Well, I just need some bids to follow. Small pull-ups, fairly quick. And then I'd be looking for a trade back to the downside. Now, keep in mind, we don't even know what the prints are yet. All we're doing is basing, we're showing what the personality of the stock is and what the possibilities are. Then when we add the prints, we can really tune in and you know, fine tune exactly what we're seeing going on. But based off of what we've seen so far, that's exactly what it's telling us. Okay, we look at our pullbacks. How does it like to pull? How did it like to pull? Well, we pulled up all at once, making this move to the top side. And then we've basically just been coming down. Again, small pull up. Small pull-ups, and it's been building on that way down based off of what we see here. 
So statistics tell us, let's get over this 205. Okay, if we have prints down, I, you know, again, I don't know what the prints are, but if we had prints at like 204, which it didn't hit, only got to 204.20, we would be looking to take a nice quick trade to that downside. That sets us up perfect. Does everyone see why? Okay. Let's try to find something that looks different. Uh... Let's look at Dash. Okay, and I know volume is garbage, but more along the chart I want to talk about. <clears throat> so what do we see here? Kind of smooth if you take away volume. Absolutely. I'm looking at something, though. that kind of jumps out. Triggers work out, definitely. Well, I like its trigger personality. Something that kind of jumps out. Uses psych and lines, but definitely. Not exactly what I'm looking for, but definitely true. When it does something, does it like to do it staggered or all at once? All at once. So we can see it looks like they built to the upside. And they made their money time all the way to the downside. And now I'm assuming there's some type of aspirins up here because it's just doing all its movement all at once. Is that a good stock to trade? It's just a freaking volume. I would really look, be looking to trade it. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that a great personality for a stock, doing things all at once? What does that mean for us as traders and, and trying to find and anticipate triggers? It's easier because they happen more. By following the prints within this and taking a trigger, as long as I, I know what I'm doing, you know, direction, I have a pretty smooth trade almost at every, you know, every spot that we've seen what could, could look like a trigger. Again, you know, volume sucks, but, you know, we got to work with what we got. But that's more along the lines of what I wanted to show is that it's just the way that it goes about moving, it does it all at once. And that makes for a great trade because that raises our trigger percentages. And if our trigger percentage are higher, the chances of our entries become higher, so on and so forth. Let's take a look at, let's see, is there... So many stocks look the same today. I want to give you guys different examples. Volume sucks. Okay. This is an interesting one. Let's look at H-O-T-H. So I know there's no volume right now. I want you to look at this and tell me about, not only about its personality, but dig into it. H-O-T. Let's say there's great aspirants at 350. 
Okay. So great aspirants at 350. And when we look at here and we start to look for its personality, what do we notice? Trigger out of nowhere after um, uh, a few more hours building. Okay. Needs a lot of volume to get it moving. Okay. <laughs> it's holding three. All right. Why would I argue that a trigger out of nowhere is a terrible trade? no way to plan the trade well i mean like right now i could just i could have an order ready at like 316 and the second that this thing starts to you know get some volume out of nowhere <laughs> I could click the button doesn't show follow okay why if someone called out the stock with a bar of volume out of nowhere would i shake my head from what i see here Yeah, they're, they're not building. Look at the volume here and the personality of the stock. <laughs> so you came in real nice, okay. Did they build on this move to the downside, really? Has this flag failed? Did they actually build? Doesn't look like it. Then they come in with this high volume again, push it up. What happens almost right afterwards? Did they build? They didn't. So if they didn't build, what can I think about the market maker? Well, what's the only reason to bring a $3.50 stock back down to three? What would the only reason to do that if the stock had four? To build. So if they pushed it up and then brought it down but didn't build, what do you think the reason was? Yeah, it sure looks like getting out to me, doesn't it? I'm not even look. I don't even know what the prints were. Oh well, I mean we're under the assumption we have ass prints at 350 just for the example, but I don't even know what the prints are. But this doesn't make any sense. They didn't do anything. So I have to be under the assumption this market maker or the personality of, of this stock <coughs> really isn't in build and it's not in money time, it's dead. So a bar that comes out of nowhere would really just be to do what? Mm -hmm. Get out. <laughs> so when I, you know, when I look at a chart for its personality and how it's trading, I also want to know what the market maker is doing. Let's keep an eye for a second. Let's see. I mean, that wouldn't be a trigger anyway, but. If you had an order sitting there ready to get in, that would have been kind of enticing. Well, let's see. Well, it's never a good sign when some volume comes in and then it just stops dead. <laughs> we can keep an eye on that. Put it on your side. All right. And what did Davis, Davis, what was the stock you said? EXR? ECX, I mean? All right. What do we see here?
It's just the same type of personality. Looks like they set a position, but still have some building. Uh, still have some building occurring. Okay. I mean, it's coming down on not much. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. I understand that. You know, but when we look at this, even our original push, were they that adamant about it? And I know there's probably just wasn't a lot available, but with only 100K, I, this guy's personality, I'm not really that interested in. I mean, it's this cheap a stock, you know, I would need to see more coming in. Like, you know, this this should have been waxing for a little bit more. Again, you know, it's just the, the when we look at the personality here, I'm just not with them. I don't believe in them based off of what we see going on here. Yeah, we could look at PDD. We'll finish up on this one. What do we see about personality? Very limited pull-ups. It trades very well on low volume, doesn't it? Would we say that this one's building on the way down? Why am I going to say no? Why am I going to say no? Yeah, it's volume. And look, see, are the bars really that consolidated when they're actually moving? You got a little bit, but the volume's too low. They're not really doing much. A lot of this is floating to the downside rather than actually being traded to the downside. So I know there's not a ton of market makers in it today. It's going to have a little bit higher than average volume overall. But a lot of times its volume is, you know, it's really garbage. But, you know, I don't see you know, 8 million shares. It's not really a ton. But with the right prints. Even though volume's lower, is it a viable stock to look at to trade based off of what we see within its personality? Yeah, it wouldn't be my first pick, but it's something that I'll keep my eyes on. Again, a stock like this, though, if we go back to it, what's the most important entry? If we're going to enter a stock like this, do we can we wait for the second trigger with a personality like this, or do we need to make sure that we're anticipating that first one? that first one anticipate that's all you always want to do that but when a stock's really hot or it's you know the beginning of the morning you're going to get multiple entries that come into it okay it's when it gets to that point where you're you know entries are going to be more few and far between yep no there's no reason not to nail the first one and a lot and risk a lot on the second absolutely all right guys do we have any questions How can I tell it's not building? Because there's no volume. <laughs> that simple. If we look, they brought it down. They didn't do anything. And then after this final move up, it was just all selling to bring it down. There was nothing else. And guys, what do we notice here? Yeah, it looked like it was going to come in. And no, right back down. Death Valley. Dips Valley's in Death Valley. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, remember, traders exchange today at 1230. See everyone in the chat and happy trading.